Okay, hello everyone. Today I'm going to be doing a supplemental video to the Poncho OS series. If you don't know what that is, um, there's this video series by this guy named Poncho who goes through creating an operating system. So you should see that first, and this tutorial um, today is going to be attaching the GNU debugger to VS Code. Um, this can be done at any point through the OS so long as you have the kernel. Um, so at any point you can go ahead and do this series. For the sake of today I'm going to be doing it for episode 13 and as you can see I have his repository up here and so let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing you're going to want to do is if you don't have the operating system like me I'm gonna go ahead and for the purposes of this video clone his repository. If you already have um, your own operating system and you're following along you can just skip this step. Um, but we're gonna have to clone his repository so I'm gonna go ahead and copy the HTTP and type in git clone, paste the repository, copy this URL slug because I want the branch and go ahead and clone that into Windows subsystem for Linux. If you're already on Linux, uh, you can just go ahead and do this through the terminal. Okay, so now you can see I have Visual Studio Code open, and there's two important extensions we're gonna need before we get started. The first is this WSL extension. If you are using WSL, I already have this installed. You should have this installed as well by default if you have WSL. If not, go ahead and install it by searching it for it in extensions. And then we're also going to need C, C++ by Microsoft. I also have this one installed, and if you don't, you should have this one installed too. So now we can go ahead and open the operating system. I'm going to open in WSL and I'm going to open what I just cloned. So as you can see, we're in VS Code now with a terminal. If you notice, it says bash. We are in the bash terminal for WSL. Um, if you don't see this, go ahead and click terminal, new terminal. Um, unfortunately, there's a bit of a problem now, is that through the normal Poncho OS uh, running script, it's a batch file and it is not a bash file. Linux users can go ahead and ignore this step as well, um, but Windows users need to invoke a batch script through WSL. And the way to do that is WSL provides you a way uh, if you simply type the .exe equivalent uh, for the executable. So what we can go ahead and do is use PowerShell to run the, ba the batch script on our behalf. So we can go ahead and type in powershell.exe and then in quotes the script we want to run. So we want to go ahead and run dot backslash meaning it's a script kernel slash run dot bat. So we can go ahead and give this a quick test and see if Kimu runs and as you can see kernel initialized successfully. The next step is to create a task for VS Code to do us on our behalf, and you can create one by clicking Terminal, Run Task, Configure Task, Create the Tasks.json file, and others. And here's a helpful link for the format uh, if you decide to further configure this. Okay, so there's two phases to the Poncho kernel. The first is to build it through the make command, and the second is to run the batch script we just ran earlier. So tasks allow you to do these individual components in VS Code. So for the first task, we'll just call it build. And we can cd into kernel and make. For the next task, we can go ahead and copy and paste this. We'll call it run. And then we'll have to go ahead and run this command that we had earlier. There will be a slight problem though, is that there's some invalid characters. That's no problem, we can use a backslash on these and another backslash to indicate a path. 
And before I forget, this needs a backslash. Now to put it all together, we can go ahead and copy and paste this object. And we can call it build and run. And instead of a command, we'll have some dependencies. So the order has to be sequential. And it depends on, in this order, our build task and our run task. So now we can go ahead and test this real quick. Go ahead and click terminal, run task, build and run, and then continue without scanning for input. And as you just saw, two tasks just happened. We have the build phase and now the run phase. And if we check Kimu, kernel initialized successfully. I also forgot to make the image, so make build image. So now we can go ahead and add debug symbols to our kernel by going to the make file, going to C flags, and type dash G, and then for the optimization level, we want no optimization. For people who optimize their kernel, you're going to want to turn this off somehow once you're debugging. Um, otherwise, while you're debugging, certain symbols will be optimized out and you won't be able to see exactly what they are. Now we're going to want to enable the built-in debugger protocol for Kimu. So we can go ahead and click the run.bat and it's as simple as typing dash s to network and dash s for the debugger. Okay, finally we'll need to create a launch pattern for VS Code to follow for debugging. This is probably the trickiest part, but it's not too bad. So go ahead and click run, start debugging, C++ and unfortunately it doesn't start debugging for us but we do go ahead and get this nice launch.json template. So let's go ahead and modify this. We can call this something a little more informative such as debug kernel. We can keep the type the same, the requests. We'll go ahead and need to set this to wherever the kernel is. So for poncho it looks like it's in here. So workspace folder slash kernel slash bin slash kernel dot elf. Go ahead and remove this and keep this the same. We'll want to go ahead and add mi debugger path. And then keep that. We can make the target architecture x64. And now for the setup commands, we can keep this the same. We will need some custom launch setup commands, however. The first one we want to target remote localhost on this port. This can be configured in Kimo, but we'll leave it as it is for now. And we'll call this connect to Kimo. And for the next launch command, we'll have to locate the symbol file. We'll also want a pre-launch task to go ahead and do our tasks that we had before we called it build and run. So moment of truth time. Let's go ahead and click run and start debugging. And look at that. Chemo is paused. The reason why this is happening is because earlier we wanted our commands to be performed sequentially. However, the debugger and Kimu are now on the same thread, which is bad because they need to be on separate threads to do their own things.
Fortunately, we are using PowerShell, and PowerShell has a command called start process that will start this process independently. However, we don't get this integrated terminal window, but I think that is a fair trade. So now it should be the moment of truth time. So let's go ahead and go into source, kernel, and let's set a breakpoint right at the entry point. Okay, so now we can go ahead and click run, start debug. As you can see, here's our separate console window. Chemo loads. Let's go ahead and put this to the side. And look at that, we hit our breakpoint. We can click this debug icon, and we can see a little bit more information. Here's a page table manager, boot info. And we can use this as a normal debugger in VS Code. We'll go ahead and step into and step over these. As you can see, these values change. And you can go ahead and change them yourself if you so desire. And that's pretty much everything. Thank you guys for watching this supplemental Poncho OS kernel guide. If you would like to see more of these, go ahead and comment below. I would be very curious to see if I should continue making more of these. And if that's the case, I hope I'll see you guys next time.